Now you might be wondering what animals, and in particular chimpanzees, have to do with improving your HR capabilities. Hi, this is Rob O'Byrne from Logistics Bureau, and with me today I've got Andrew O'Keefe from Hardwired Humans. Uh, welcome, Andrew. Thanks, Rob. And uh, I've just heard Andrew give a fantastic presentation, which gives you a totally different outlook on how to manage teams of people in a business. And I grabbed Andrew and said, Andrew, could you share with people watching this, you know, what are two or three key takeouts from that presentation? Yeah, there's, uh, there's a few. One uh, that, I, that I shared is that one key aspect is that if we're managing a member, uh, members of a species, like in our case, mm -hmm. managing Homo sapiens, then it's really handy if we know some basic attributes of the species. Uh, I told the story, as you remember, that um, I was listening to the radio Saturday morning a few weeks ago and there was a talkback radio show where you help people fix problems around the house and there was this one caller who called in. He had a problems with his chickens who weren't laying. At this stage the caller just had two chooks mm. uh, but he was planning to get more chooks mm. and it was clear to him that at least only one of his chickens was laying. So if you like, his performance challenge was the chooks aren't laying, and he rang in to, what do I do about this? And just in passing, he sort of made a comment that maybe I should separate the chooks uh, to see which one's not laying. And, and the host said, well, they're a, they're a flock species. They won't like that. Mm. In other words, you're certain, you need to know certain things about a species if you're managing them. And so what I shared and what I talk about is the nine attributes of us mm. humans that uh, for leaders in, in logistics and other businesses, if, if you're leading a group of humans, which mm. we obviously all leaders are, then there's certain basic things you need to know about them. Okay. So that was, that's point number one. Uh, point number two, which I guess often comes up, is to do with change management. Mm. So for instance, most leaders find, and, and in the logistics industry is obviously a really big challenge always, is change management. Mm. and and uh, rearrangements of work or restructures mm. or relocations and there's a lot of myths around change management which this insight into human instincts helps mm. busts. Uh, the biggest myth is that people resist change. Now that can't possibly be true from a zoological or species perspective. If we were a species mm. that was resistant of change we'd be still living in caves. So <laughs> obviously we're not. We're very actually accepting of change and there's one instinct in particular, one of the nine instincts mm which really gives insight into what really happens when people mm. resist change and what it is that we, we have this aversion to loss. So mm. humans are most motivated by the avoidance of loss rather than gain. And then what happens when we hear about a change, often on the grapevine, mm. if at that moment when we first hear about the change, we don't know how it might affect us, which is mm. usually the case, then we, err, we tend to not err on the side mm. of the optimistic uh, possibility yeah we jump to the fear mm. concern, which the scientists say is just as well. You can't imagine an organism being wide, anything mm. other than resistant of change. And where that loss aversion attribute helps us is it keeps us out of harm's way. Now, the possibilities then for leaders in managing change is to go right at, at the beginning so that they really influence the moment when people mm. first hear about the change. So that, that's, that's observation. I suppose, I suppose it's to think of what, what are those fears of loss that people what, are going to have and counter them right up front. Yeah, that's right. Really, really uh, alter them up front, um, mm. reduce the, the, mm. the, the possibility of loss uh, to influence or, or be very conscious mm. about the moment when pe people yeah. first hear about the change. That they're mm. o Often that means as individuals by the yeah. leaders, not, okay. on, not on the gossip grapevine. Um, so that, that's, that's sort of key point number yeah, two. Yeah. And, and I guess uh, key point number three, if I had to choose a third one, it would be this critical role of leaders mm. of social species. So at our core, we humans are a social species, which is why the comparison mm. to another big brain species, the, mm. the chimps who live in large, complex, mm. multi-generational, dual gender, mm. multi-family groups. Um, so they have a level of organisational yeah. complexity as we do. So as leaders, it's really handy to know if you're managing a social species that you as a leader have a really critical role in the way mm. you lead. And, and the one key attribute of leadership from this perspective is that you use your power well, that mm. you're, not, you, you're not passive and you're not overly aggressive, mm. uh, that you use your power well. And in fact, um, as you'll recall, one of the stories from the chimp researcher of Jane Goodall 
the constructive leaders of chimps, they last as leaders for 10 years. Yep. The tyrants, they only get to last for about two years. There might be a few lessons for <laughs> us there, not just in industry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, another lesson then, yeah. topical of the moment in Australia, yeah. is what happens to a deposed leader mm. of chimps? Some take it really hard. Some mm. retreat to the back bench and they, they mm. try to gather the numbers to yeah. later make another run for the top job. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating, fascinating. And um, I mean, we, we could talk all day about this. Um, Andrew, I've, I've seen you speak on this topic a couple of times and it's really fascinating. The first time I heard you speak, I had to rush out and buy your book. So is it okay That's if we nice. just tell people well, where we can get the book? Why not? Um, so you go to hardwiredhumans.com yeah. and the book is called Hardwired Humans. Very good. It's a fascinating read. Uh, I would recommend you get out there. So uh, Andrew, thanks very much for sharing yeah, two or three on. key points. Thank you. Thanks.